Tech and fashion don't always mix. Wearables are ugly, and people still want to try things on in a store. But Rebecca Minkoff has built a tech-fueled fashion line that redefines all of this. Bracelets that charge your phone, dresses with a 3D print, and a boutique that changes the way people shop. And it starts with these mirrors. First thing I do is I ask you if you want something to drink. So we'll go over here to, to sip. Uh -huh. And what we do is we have a, a menu option. So it could be water, sparkling water, green tea, coffee, espresso, or even bubbly. I don't see a fine scotch on there. We'll have to add that just for you. Thank you. You specifically have a software background, and I think a lot of people would think that that doesn't really translate into fashion. But what was the lessons that you brought from software that, that you found a, a really surprising application for here? Kind of every step of the way, I took this kind of tech first initiative. You know, who's the end user, right? What does the funnel look like? So it's kind of in this tech focused way to building a fashion company, and it was very different. And so running a company with those thoughts in mind just add a different mentality that I think gives us kind of an X factor. And in partnership with eBay, which built the technology, they use this X factor to guide me through the store. I ordered a green tea, which was delivered to me, and some items to, well, probably not to try on, but I got a text when they were ready in my dressing room. We picked up a jacket along the way to keep the system on its toes. We're gonna come in, mm -hmm. and as you just saw, it just popped it up just on popped the screen. Up. Wow, that was really fast. It instantly knew what was in the room. Yeah, so one of the things we'll do here is we'll come back here. Uh, clearly, we have a small here, but let's say the small didn't fit, Yeah. right? And we wanted uh, you know, an extra small. And so we're gonna say, bring this to my room. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like with Uber, Yeah. right? So you see it's that. exactly like with Uber. So you now you know who your store associate is. Mm -hmm. so she's gonna be there in a minute. So you now don't right. need to leave half naked. Mm -hmm. You don't need to go. You don't need to go finding out who works here, who's my stylist, right? right? You get to stay here yeah, because the only thing worse than asking if somebody works here is asking if somebody works here while you're while half you're naked. half naked. Yeah. Exactly. The other thing we looked at was lighting. You might want Soho after dark. Soho after dark yeah. lighting. If you want something that's more sunny, you have Brooklyn morning, mm -hmm. afternoon on the High Line, right. or the Hudson River sunset. Now you can get some confidence around. Uh, what it might look like in your end use case. Again, mm -hmm. a software term, yeah. uh, but what's the end use case? And what does Rebecca Minkoff get? A valuable data record of everything her customers like and what they're pairing it with. And that is getting her attention from everyone. Do you expect that your competitors, if you think of them as competitors, are coming in here and seeing these things and starting to build them for, for themselves? We know our competitors are coming in. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it is going to be a, a space race of fitting rooms. It'll be a space race, but the beautiful part is our relationship with eBay is that it's a long-term contract and we're always first in. So people can come, they can see it, they can feel it, and they're going to always get you know version one while we're at 1.2. There's also a challenge here as a designer because you want to be inventing and you know you want to be thinking in ways that other people aren't. But the temptation, once you have a lot of data, may be to just serve what the data says. That if people like this kind of thing, just make this kind of thing. Right. So you, at, at some point, have to say, you know what, screw the data. I think you're looking at the data, but you always have to keep innovating. I think it's never, it's taking this data, solving a problem with it, and then what is the next thing that the customer doesn't know that they want, right, that we could do that would make them excited.